Howdy, this is Willis and let's make this better. How many times have you come back to the powder room after seeing a man about a horse a couple of hours ago and realized that the exhaust fan has been running forever? And that's because the switch that controls the exhaust fan isn't on a timer. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in a timer today. It's going to be pretty quick and easy. What we're going to do is use these tools here. We've got a drill and we've got the flat bit to remove the plate screws and a Phillips bit to remove the existing switch. We've got a electrician's pliers just in case we've got some wires we need to straighten out and a couple of flat bladed screwdrivers for the very end. We're going to be installing one of these timers which we used very successfully in many places when we get them from Amazon. They've got preset time intervals that the fan will run for and then turn off on its own. And also by pushing the the big button down here, you can manually turn the fan on and off. So let's get going. What we're going to do is we're going to cut the power off and uh, with the magic of editing, we'll get right to it. Okay, we've cut the power off and I can confirm that because the motor for the fan isn't running and the light isn't running, so we're good to go. What we're going to do is pull out these four screws that hold the cover plate on. We're going to use the drill for that. plate off. Now we're going to take this switch out using the Phillips bit. Pull that out and it looks like it's basically just a straight feed and we'll need to hook up the common to the timer as well as the hot. So this is basically just, uh, this switch is just interrupting the hot and uh, I just took it out of the circuit by sort of wiggling the fast connect connectors. So they're fast disconnect as well it seems. Okay, so now we've got wires exposed. Um, we'll need to get to the ground as well, and we'll probably need to tie into this neutral. So we'll see what the timer box has in it. It's got some wire nuts, which is always useful. And the timer has leads on it, which is very nice so that it'll be easy to attach to all the wiring. So we'll need to figure out which line is the, the load and which is the, 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 the power lead on these black All right, so we've taken the timer out of the box and it's got a bunch of leads on it. Uh, green is ground, white is neutral, black is line, the power input, and red is load going to the fan. So we're gonna to have to figure out which one of these two wires here is the line which supplies the power and which is load. It's pretty easy to figure out because the, the load is a wire that'll be going all by itself up into the ceiling and the line will be tied into a lot of other wires. So we'll need to get to the, the other wires, which means we'll need to pull this guy out possibly, or maybe not. So what we'll do is we'll get the ground wire out a little bit, making it a little easier to, to reach and tie into. And then we're going to get the flashlight, which I didn't uh, introduce you to, and use the flashlight to figure out which which wire is which. Okay, now this, this wire here goes only into the ceiling. It's not tied to anyone else, so he is the load. And this wire here goes to a wire nut, which is uh, going to be tied into all the other wires. So this is line. So what we're going to do is we're going to work sort of backwards from safest to least safe wiring. The safest is going to be ground, then um, next safest is going to be um, neut neutral, and then next is going to be load, and finally the least safe is 
is lined where the, the power comes out of. It's just my way of working in order so that I don't miss anything. So let's get these wired up. So let me slip the insulation off of it. I'm just going to slip the insulation off of all the wires because we're going to need to expose the insulation for all of them that we're at. So green, neutral. I'm sorry, green ground. What am I saying? I'm going to use my left hand so that it keeps the view, oh, view for the camera. Well, that didn't work so well, and sometimes that happens. All right. So I'll twist that stranded neutral on there and try to capture it with the wire nut. All right, okay, that's on, that's good. Next, we've got the white neutral. I'm gonna take this wire nut off and use the same wire nut. So white goes to white. good. And then here is the load, which is the red lead. And you have the sort of insulation sort of lined up and then twist the stranded wire around the solid wire. That should allow the wires to grab well when you put on the wire nut. Okay, that's good. And then finally, line. And again, wrapping the stranded wire around the solid wire. part is often the hardest part of the whole process and that is getting the timer uh, getting the device into the box and having it sit flush with the the face of the wall once you get all the wires inside and behind and the trick is to make sure that the, the wires behind the device aren't sitting directly on top of each other and uh, blocking receptacle from getting all the way into the box. So I sort of lay them out inside the back of the box, trying to get them laying flat and out of the way. And unfortunately with the light, you can't see that well. So let me shine a little bit of light on that. So things are sort of flat and in the back of the box, and uh, hopefully when I put this fixture in, there will be enough space. Yeah, it feels like there will be. So let's uh, use the drill to send the screws in. do is not drive the screws uh, drive the screws all the way flush uh, flat down um, that's because the fixture often has to sit slightly out just a wee bit in order to sit flush with the wall and with the other device so I tighten them down just a little bit 
each time just to make sure that I'm not setting the fixture too deep. And then we'll test the fitting with the plate. And that looks pretty good. That looks really good. Okay, so let's set the plates in. Might be premature. We might have to take it all out if the wiring wasn't right. So it's a little, a little bit of a leap of faith. The important thing to do is not tighten the screws down too much or else you can break the, the plate. And that's where the flat bladed manual screwdrivers come in. Um, find that other screw that I dropped. All right, so we're back and we're putting the last screw in. And it's nice to have a regular manual screwdriver to make the final tightening of the screws so that the plate is tight enough, but not too tight. All right, that feels good, okay. Now what we'll do is turn the power on and make sure it works. We've turned the power back on. The power to the light works properly. The LEDs on the timer let you know that it's got power. Pushing the different buttons give you a run length of different times. So 15 minutes generally seems to be good. You can also turn it off by pushing the big button. You can also manually turn it on and have it stay on by holding the, the big button and then you manually turn it off by pushing the big button again. So thanks for joining me. This is Willis. Willis has done this. We've made it better. Thanks a lot. See you later.